Well, today we're talking about the Canon EOS R and the RF 70 to 200 mounted on the Ronin. Let's do it. Well, hey, what's up? My name is Tony and I'm a filmmaker photographer in the St. Louis area. Right now we are in the middle of the whole coronavirus, uh, stay home lockdown kind of thing. But here in Missouri, we're allowed to go to parks. So I am out, I'm just getting some footage and uh, I figured I'd bring you guys along. What we're gonna be doing today is I'm gonna mount my EOS R and my 7200 on my Ronin S just to get some cool footage and see what it looks like. Is it possible? How well does it work? That's what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's look at the camera setup I've got and then we will just jump right into the footage. Afterwards though, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and the best way to be able to mount this thing to the Ronin and also uh, how to get some better performance out of it. Okay, so here's the setup. We've got the Ronin S um, with the EOS R, 70 to 200 with the, um, I did put an ND filter on there. It's just a Tiffin variable ND filter so that I can adjust for exposure. Uh, I'll probably be trying to stay at 2.8 as much as I can just because it looks so good. Camera settings, I'll be running 60 frames per second, uh, 1 1 25th for my shutter speed. Uh, like I said, aperture will be wide open and then I'll leave the ISO so at 400 because I'm gonna run um, log and we'll kind of see what that looks like. Um, no audio for this one. I may get some ambient sounds um, externally. Uh, I just want to try and keep the, the weight down on the Ronin to see how smooth we can get this stuff. All right guys, let's get into it.
All right, well, as you can see, you can get some amazing footage out of the EOS R with the 70 to 200 mounted on the Ronin. And so what I wanna do is just give you a few quick tips on ways that I have found that make you get better footage. The first one is you may have noticed that I didn't use the ring mount actually on the 70 to 200. I mounted the camera to the Ronin S. And uh, the reason is, is I just didn't see too much of a difference in performance. And uh, I use the Peak Design Clips, so I use the cab I use the clutch, I use their straps, all of their stuff works together and I don't want to be swapping around plates all the time. And so what I've done is I just leave an RC2 adapter on my Ronin S plate and uh, that puts my camera up a little bit higher, making it easier to balance bigger lenses and it's just quick release. I can just pop things off and on very fastly. And so if I were to put the ring, I would have to undo all of that setup so that I could put the ring on the Ronin plate, it just, it gets annoying. So I've decided just to use my, my Peak Design capture plate and mount it right onto the Ronin plate. And that makes it a little bit higher so I can move it back. If you wanna try using the ring plate or the ring on the plate, you can do that as well. But for me, it works just fine using uh, my setup that I have. Another thing that I noticed is don't balance the lens all the way at 70 or 200. Find a middle ground in between there, maybe 135. And the cam, the uh, Ronin is actually strong enough to zoom in and zoom out a little bit. Now, if you zoom all the way out, I would probably rebalance so that your motors aren't working as hard on the Ronin S, but it will handle it. And in fact, uh, I didn't really rebalance once I, once I balanced this morning for this whole shoot. And so that's just another thing. Make sure to kind of start in the middle so that you can zoom in or zoom out just a little bit either way. And then the only other thing that I want to mention is make sure that you remember that the farther your telephoto length is, the harder it is to get smooth shots. So you have to be really careful with your movements when you're moving a telephoto, especially at like 200 millimeters. So uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll try and hang back near the wide angle side of this lens, wide angle at 70, uh, 100, but I mean, really, you're gonna get your coolest shots when it's all the way out at 200. But uh, the farther away that that focal point is away from your camera, the harder it is gonna be to get good shots. So kind of play around and see what works best for you. Um, but yeah, it's a really fun setup and I enjoy doing it. Uh, if this video has been helpful for you, I'd love for you to like it and leave a comment if you've got some suggestions as well or if uh, you've got some questions about how I do things. If this video is uh, you know, helpful to somebody else you know, make sure to share it and then subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. All right guys, hope you have a great week. We'll see you in the next video.